and some some teams have been able to attack it. So if you take away some of the the safety kind of compositions for bottom lane, like Senna Tom Kench, which is which is very safe uh, and provides a lot of utility for the team, I think that's a good strategy to go after. Taking away the Oriana here, just still one of the most um, you know dominant mid lane picks because of the utility and how well she scales. Yep, we got Renekton, Varus, Morgana banned out by Mad Lions. PSG Talon with the Senna, the Oriana, and thinking a little bit longer about this last one. All right, no more Rumble. We've seen the power of this champion so far earlier today, quite a few times, but not here in this sixth game. Udir instead will be the first pick, and we're going to see our LEC Rookie of the Season, El Yoya, piloting that one. And when we saw El Yoya using this in the finals uh, versus Rogue, he put a big emphasis on stealing away enemy Raptor camp, you know, counter jungling, uh, as it's it's a very easy camp to route to, and Uder destroys it. Yeah, AoE, yeah. smash that sucker um, and keep the cooldown on it. Two minutes, be there on time, on spawn, try and add that to your route to deny experience to your opponent. Uh, and Udyr still powers through the jungle. Yes, they hit a bit of the Phoenix damage, a little bit of base attack damage, um, but he still cruises right through it uh, and becomes kind of the, the tanky stun bot later for the team. Uh, meanwhile, River gonna get a little bit more agency early locking on the Nidalee. That means I'm looking for some setup for it. Um, you know, point and click stuff, stuff like TF even, to be able to move with uh, and play off of, uh, you know, early possible Nidalee plays. Anything with stuns to try and set up her spears, make your damage a lot easier uh, to pull off. Although we already saw earlier today, works just fine without it uh, and was successfully used. Kaisa locked in as well uh, for a lot of AD carries coming for this entire year. Kaisa has been the go-to uh, try and face off there. Tristana obviously is flexible, could be solo lane still, not definitely the bottom lane lock in there for Man Lies. Right, but the Nautilus, we're pretty sure we know where that <laughs> one's going there in the support role. So we could see that Tristana flexed around a little bit, but Nautilus there in the bottom side. So we got the front line for the side of Mad Lions here with Nautilus and Udyr together. Over on the other side, no front line locked in yet so far, but there we go. The Leona hover is secured, and that will be the bottom lane with Leona and Kaisa. All right, definitely going to have playmaking ability here. Leona is one of my favorite pairings with not just Kaisa, but Nidalee because so much about it is possibilities of getting your plays on bottom side. You push out and let the Leona roam. If you have Leona with Nidalee, all of the sudden, it's on site. Anyone Leona sees, if you're able to get long range Leona ultimate, uh, you know, your combination with your Zenith Blade into stun, that person is actually dead. Uh, because of the damage that Nidalee can provide towards the early and mid stages of the game, if you can unlock your bottom lane, if you can unlock Leona for roam timings, it just incredibly empowers your Nidalee, uh, you know, to go around looking for these pickoffs. She can instantly steal away uh, camps for counter jungling and threaten anybody uh, who has anything to say about it with death. Wait, did we skip a ban? Looks like we missed one here. Sometimes they don't lock it in on time. Very, 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 very rarely do they do it on purpose. Um, it looks like maybe it was just out of order there. Uh, probably just a little uh, hiccup on the graphics. Oh yeah, because it ping pongs back. So that was just out of order. Okay, all right, cool. Just making sure that we didn't have any wild and crazy activities going on. Let's see what the last ban is here so far. It is Wukong and Nocturne. Both banned away. Remember that Nocturne is a flex pick these days, played top lane pretty frequently. You already mentioned how Armin had some pretty important performances on Wukong to get the Mad Lions to the point where they're able to compete here at MSI today. So really targeting him there in the top lane here in this second phase. Meanwhile, on the other side, it's Victor and Diana taken off of the table. Both of those champions powerful in the mid lane. Definitely true, and in the jungle. Diana jungle here, also very threatening. She's emerged as one of those flex picks because of the boosted damage to jungle monsters with the passive and the recent buffs to the champion. So they're also kind of covering a few of the bases there. Jungle, like we said, is one of the, the roles that got so many injections with the last few patches uh, for opportunities to step outside that role. And it's actually so crazy. How long has it been since we've saved a jungle pick for final counter pick on red side? I feel like that 
Uh, or actually, oh, I'm they have the I'm going off the What are you talking about? I was going off the dilly from the very beginning. Okay. Anyways, Diana is a flex pick, but you're right. Uh, <laughs> from Finlay, Lee Sin, That's what Solo I was like. Lane. Where is the niddly going to go if the Diana's in the jungle? <laughs> Uh, just wanted to emphasize that Diana is a flex pick and definitely is also a viable jungle role. Uh, Lee Sin, though, there is picked up here for solo lane and combined with the rise, has really good split pushing. This could actually be very powerful at 1 3 1. One thing about Lee Sin solo lane, um, a lot of people are used to fighting the jungle Lee Sins, and so uh, a lot of surprise plays get pulled off with the extra levels. He's actually very good at split pushing later on in the game, too. So Mad Lions opening up with very flexible here, uh, possible 1 3 1 options. Meanwhile, it's pretty straightforward on the side of PSG Town. They have a lot of team fighting, very good frontline setup here. Um, you know, for uh, uh, the rest of the squad with Maple locking in the set mid lane. I want to see if he actually goes more AD focus. Usually set mid lane is tank set. Right. Um, but a lot of the, the extra buffs that we just got on the patch were to AD scaling for set. Um, and the, the tank base stats were hit a while ago for him to try and get less set flexed it around towards the jungle role uh, or towards the uh, support role and mid lane role. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that build, but it is a lot more straightforward here for PSG talent. Yeah, and I like having the Lee against the Gnar as well, because mini Gnar is normally so good at just keeping his distance away from everyone, constantly playing around that, kiting you around with a boomerang. But if Lee Sin finds the angle, safeguard to a minion, hit him with the Sonic Wave, catch up to him with Resonating Strike, Lee Sin can bring a lot of pain to him when he's in that mini form. Definitely true, because you can choose your opportunities with Lee Sin. One of the biggest things, the mobility of this champion. It's why he is everybody's longtime favorite, one of the most popular champions to play. It's so fun because of the mobility. Uh, and nowadays, with the solo lane Lee Sin's, Going for the Gore Drinker, you're really beefy and you have a lot of health regeneration, uh, lifesteal and big bursts of health uh, restoring as well. So uh, you can really excel in these long team fights where you jump out uh, during dangerous moments, but you have so many opportunities to get back in because of the sustain of the champion and of the build being used. Okay, here we go. Last game of the day, it's Mad Lions versus PSG Talon. We get to see a little bit of that new flavor with the Lee Sin. We get to see the set back here in mid lane again. So that means it's set versus rise here. And that leads me to believe, Kobe, that it is probably going to be a pretty tanky build, at least early on, because damage set doesn't get too close to rise. Definitely does not want to stick his head out. Uh, should be wave control here. Uh, for Humanoid, he's gone for. Maple does have the fleet footwork, so set, you know, trying to sustain through the early phases, does try and use um, uh, W to finish up and uh, try and get the AoE on the minions. So we shall see about the build as well as the skill path, because mid lane set usually does opt for that instead of, uh, you know, the playmaking for the other roles. Yep. Meanwhile, jungle start here, bottom side for both of them. Red buff here for El Yoya, maybe delayed invade. There is a sweeper on Nidalee. Uh, River does have the sweeper, so they might go for the delayed invade. The Leona plus Nidalee combination. And they walk away just, in they waited the perfect amount of time if they're really invading this. The Fog of War is creeping in. The sweeper's coming through. Karzi's gonna get found. Oh, the follow-up is there, but Karzi jumps away. Rocket jump getting him away for now. River continues the chase here with the auto attacks into the queue. And the buff doesn't even reset. They'll be able to take it down, steal that away. Nicely done by PSG Talon. As you said, the timing on it's so, so good here from PSG Talon. And we already get to see the Leona Nidalee leveling spear first, goes in, hits the spear. Zenith Blade comes, tr uh, comes through. Karzi actually has to go all the way back to base. He's chunked down to 50% HP. So Karzi is going to be under leveled in this bottom lane matchup. And when you do have uh, the Kaisa Leona, they go for big plays. There's the flash. Oh, the flash into the face breaker with minions means that Humanoid is forced to flash as well. With both of those out of the picture, that means that River can make a return trip here very soon for some of that setup CC to once again do its job. Now, the EXP point that you made, this is where it's going to be important. If that level two spike can come in time before the wave gets shoved in too far, uh, back up here in the top side, Hanabi goes into the mini form, continuing to just trade a little bit up there. 
But back here in bottom, where's the level two? There it is. Kai Wing's got it, but it doesn't look like there's an angle for him to go in and look for anything too crazy just yet. It makes it so hard for Udyr. He has to gank because uh, El Yoya has no Raptor camp. Flash was used by Maple already aggressively. Okay, Maple gets stunned, has the Haymaker. That gank hurt Humanoid as much as it hurt Maple. They both just walked away with the same amount of damage on them. El Yoya tries to go into the bottom side river. Now you can see both those Scuttle Crabs are about to spawn. And River knows his opponent is on this bottom side. He wants to contest for this. He knows he has the stronger bottom lane. They want to play around it, but they're not there in time. Doggo flashes over the wall, but Doggo is down. karzi has got the first blood, and he wants to make it too. Force this man out of lane at level one. He's coming back with a vengeance. El Yoya sets it up and El Yoya knocks it down. Welcome to the team, Doggo. He subs in and immediately Mad Lions attack, even after the early, very beneficial start where they chunk out Karzi. He's down in experience. Because El Yoya is counter jungled so heavily, he's able to get down to bottom side first. They go for the engage onto Doggo, flash over, ignite use, and they kill him off. This is exactly what Mad Lions needed to get right back into this game. The opening was so well played by PSG Talent. Uh, just count off how many advantages they got. They chunk out bottom lane, force him off of the early wave of experience. They actually counter jungle, triple buffing them. Hook here, and we they are continue. Done. We are done. Kai Wing's gonna get jumped on. The man's got no flash to fully get away. There's oh. a little bit more damage, but not quite enough. Now River wants to jump over the wall, see if maybe there's a counter attack to be made. I'll just back up here from the try brush, it seems. Man, I love how aggressive Mad Lions are willing to play now that they've got that kill, now that they've got that advantage down there. They really want to press that advantage. Yeah, I mean, this, this bottom lane is, has been inconsistent, but this bottom lane is playing so well off of that first bottom visit from El Yoya. And again, this is off of them getting basically three quadrants denied to them because Nidalee counter jungles red, counter jungles raptor. So El Yoya is sitting there at level three, makes the move mid, unsuccessful gank there, has to go bottom, and they just walk right into him. Doggo, you should not be staring down this Nautilus. He, he plays chicken with him, gets hit by the hook, and once you get hit by the hook, he can't get out because it's a lockdown CC, you get the passive auto there, uh, and they're able to get enough damage that when you flash, instant flash follow. El Yoya gets to run it uh, straight through for the extra kill too. Phoenix stance execution there, and Mad Lions are <laughs> celebrating. You're like, yo, we got invaded, we got counter jungled, we got denied from possible routes and possible camps to pick up. But guess what? Even when forced into making these ganks, making these plays, Mad Lion makes the best of a bad situation. Two kills picked up for them for the early game, and you shrug off even even the the camp deficit here. You see El Yoya level five. Only a camp behind River. Okay, let's see if there's a play to be made down here in bottom, though, as both junglers are hanging around. Kaiser goes in, and it looks like Kai Wing could be in a pretty bad spot, my friend. The CC is there, the damage is there, the whole thing's ready to go, and El Yoya takes kill number two for himself. You know what? It's actually the biggest strength. Mad Lion's bottom lane is going in. Yes, the CS is uh, is not there. It's still very difficult, but... Who they cares? They got kills! Exactly. See Yes, those champs. All right, they actually pick it up again. Good aggression out of Tristana plus uh, Nautilus, consistently looking for these engages. And since Leona has no escapes there, easy target. They pick her off. That's two kills now onto Liliona. Karzi with a very good positioning here on the minion wave, even as Tristana with your explosive shot blowing them up. You can deny a little bit of the minions, and they call down River here even for PSG Town just to make sure. Uh, that they have extra bodies in the area uh, for any further aggression. Maple wants to go for the dive. His ultimate is available. Teleport is ready uh, for Arma, I think a couple seconds away, barely on cooldown. Okay, they're trying to get Karzi out of there, but he's locked down, he's beat down, and River's taking the kill. Now, can they get away in time? Kaiser gets a return oh. kill onto Maple. Kai Wing's gonna die now next. Humanoid taking that one. River is just dried up, my friends, and the Mad Lions rip PS. G Talon apart. It's a disaster for PSG Talon. It's a sunk cost fallacy, Flowers. Your bottom lane is toast. Your bottom lane has been roasted, okay? They try and play off it. They try and turn it around on the Mad Lion since there's no summoner spells there for Karzi and Kaiser. And yet, 
teleport for our mutt. Looking at that thing, it was a couple of seconds, just came off cooldown just in time. He gets down there, they make the collapse. It's just too much damage sustained from the tower. Axe Effect replay here does result uh, in the kill on Dakarzi. They burst him down, but they're so squishy there. And you can see Kaiser just focusing on locking down target with tower aggro. Ignite goes down, tower shots finish him off. It's just it's just a cleanup duty there. Arma very happy with the aftermath. Man, it feels bad to be a level three Leona getting your butt whooped by two level six solo laners that show up just to make sure that you're not getting away with this dive. And PSG Talon now finds themselves almost 2,000 gold behind. And here's a Mad Lion special. You know this team really likes getting a Rift Herald. They like being able to use this to get themselves some early leads in terms of gold. And El Yoya's already here. Rift Herald spawns at eight minutes, Whoop. eight and a half minutes into the game. He's on it. Hanabi trying to get himself away as Kaiser has rotated up to the top half of the map while they secure that Herald. And now we've got ourselves a bot lane plus jungle push in the top side. And that's probably going to be a lot of money over to Mad Lions. PSG Talon doing what they can to take whatever resources are available, which includes a bottom lane plate, which includes that first Drake. We've already got one plate taken off the top lane tier one. It'll be number two before Shelly charges Ooh. in, but they're going in for Hanabi instead. El Yoya's got the stun here with the bear slap. Hanabi transforming into the Mega Nar in time to try to get himself out of here. One more auto attack does it. Kaiser will not die in return. Karzi takes the kill on that, and they're right back onto the tier one. How clean has Kaiser been this game, Flowers? Their bottom lane gets chunked out. He doesn't flinch, constantly finding these engages. Kaiser Nautilus is the difference maker. 100% kill participation. Every hook hits. He nails the Nar right out of the jump. Mini Nar jump used, hooks him in still, gets off the auto. Even after the flash there, Hanabi gets taken down. Kaiser is king. Man, I'm going to have to, like, stop listening to people telling me that the bottom lane of Mad Lions is the weak spot on the team because <laughs> this does not look like a weak spot, man. These two are having an awesome game of League of Legends. 100% kill participation for Kaiser. Karzi's sitting here on 2, 1, and 3 after being chunked so badly at level 1 that he's late to lane. Great showing from them. Honestly... There's no reason for him to stop either. Geyser hits level six on the Nautilus, and you can continue to just burn flashes on cooldown here. He's walking with priority through the jungle with El Yoya, hand in hand. They clean up the extra vision here in the river, supplanting it with their own control wards. And you see that level six Nautilus walking around every, well, we've got a 3v1. Okay, Humanoid did not want to end up there, but that's where he is. Bottom side, they try to go for a play on to Doggo to trade one for one across the map, but the Flash gets Doggo out in time. He learned his lesson from the previous interaction with the Nautilus there in that bottom side river. So Doggo is safe, but doesn't have the Flash ready to go. It also cost Maple's Flash to get the kill on Humanoid uh -oh. there in the mid lane, get the angle for the ulti. PSG Talon looking to maybe make a play. Ooh, nice spear on the Kaiser. He has no flash. He has no way out of this. Kaiser should be 100% dead. 110% dead. 120% dead. Even keep using going, the going, solar flare, 130% dead. 200. 140% dead. And Rivers, the one taking the third kill of the game here for PSG 10. All right. Maybe a caster curse in action, Flowers. Just a little bit. Just like that, Maple, he makes the play on mid lane. Flash and set ultimate back under tower. Guess what? Humanoid's not getting out of that one. So that is one kill for them. Get Getting the extra money means a lot for PSG Talon at this stage. And then Kaiser was looking for an aggressive opportunity, but they didn't adjust for losing all mid pressure. It yep. was a very good power play for, for Mad Lions. They should, you know, do exactly what we're talking about. They're cleaning up the vision. They're moving into the jungle. They're trying to use their advantage here. Level six Nautilus ult is ready to get that pick. And yet you have to react. As soon as Humanoid gets taken down from mid lane, all of your pressure from the mid lane just collapses, evaporates. And so then the roam down through the river means that Kaiser was all alone in enemy territory, gets taken in. Uh, down by the team and a repeat play here bringing down our mutt does result in a turret plate forces them off the tower but a little bit deep in the jungle okay let's see if our can get himself out of here doing all right right now 
Maple throws out the Haymaker just so he doesn't take too much extra damage there from the Rise. Hanabi teleporting down here to make sure that if the fight does go all the way that he's ready to participate. But man, they are feeding Karzi so many of these plates. He got everything up there in the top lane. They're leaving him alone to push the bot lane turret. The man could set the whole dinner table at this rate, Kobe. Now they're oh. going for a dive here in the mid lane. It's Maple in some trouble with a Haymaker buying him enough time, or does it? Oh, that last <laughs> little niddly heel keeps him alive. It does. Ultimate into W from set. It's really hard to finish him off. Uh, Nidalee here, heel is there for the last little bit. And all members using their pressure here, trying to dive on mid lane. Like the look, uh, but good evasive maneuvers here from the side of Maple and PSG Talon. They're trying to stabilize. Their problem is, again, like we kind of alluded to in Champ Select, Mad Lions have a pretty good 1-3-1 one, one option to, to, to pressure the rest of the map. And since they've got top tower down so early due to their focus on Rift Herald uh, and using that Rift Herald objective to knock down the last plates on top side, it opens up the game plan. Tristana is a turret demolitionist. It able to explode these turrets moving across the map. So as you mentioned, a lot of the turret plates on bottom side were given to the Tristana. Top side was completely decimated with the Rift Herald, therefore Lee Sin. And it kind of feeds into the Mad Lions game plan here, where they're going to try and pressure these side lanes, then look for these collapse and these flanks uh, onto the side of PSG Talon. They've got the gold lead to do it here, setting up for the Dragon, establishing their vision in these jungle entrances first. Plus, when you see uh, Hanabi still a little bit low on the Narbar there, trying to stack up, there's no big team fight presence for PSG Talon. So this dragon has to be forfeit by them. Uh, yep. And Mad Lion's very, very happy to just keep Rise out in the side lane. If they keep Humanoid farming at this pace, he's going to be a freaking monster in the mid game. 162 at only 14 and a half minutes. He's taking jungle camps. He's getting side lane farm. This, this is well over the 10 per minute uh, average that you're looking for just for the baseline. And, and he is going to be that huge huge, huge AP threat, both in the side lanes and with the possibility of realm warping for the collapse to blow people up in team fights as well. And as we're not seeing any big fights break out right now, I do want to bring something up, and this is a point that I believe it was you and Isaac and Mark were talking about on the dive, is that PSG Talon is the absolute best team in their region by quite a lot. You already brought up their impressive win rate in spring of 26 and 1. None, that one loss was not in the playoffs, so they, they perfectly concluded their playoffs. But the problem is, when you are that far in control of your own region, the question becomes, well, do you have any good competition? Do you have anybody to really put you to the test and make you improve yourselves? And right now, Mad Lions is putting PSG Talon to the test. Coming into MSI, PSG Talon is the team that has the highest major lead and the lowest amount of time in a major deficit of any team coming into this tournament. But what that might also mean is that they are not prepared for the level of competition that their opponents are able to bring to the table because right now, Mad Lions look like they're just a cut above. I would also say, too, because we had the caveat in the beginning of the day, um, and I talked about usually the big carries for this team are Maple um, and, uh, and Unified. And yet Unified is the one that actually had to sub out this time, which is definitely difficult. Yes, it's easier to slot an AD carry into the team, but he did the most damage uh, for the entire team. He, he was the highest damage shareholder and a very big part of the squad. Thus far, with bottom lane, you know, showing a lot of aggression on the side of Mad Lions, it does feel like that also uh, is kind of hurting PSG Town. So a couple of different things here. Um, with, uh, with Doggo having some big shoes to fill, trying to come in for Unified and carry that damage share burden. Um, is on the Kai'Sa, though. Has Kraken Slayer compete, uh, completed, so he is... He's in position to follow up. There's a lot of okay. CC on the team to apply Plasma, to, to look for picks that he can follow up for with the Killer Instinct. Now that they are kind of out of the lane phase, maybe they can look for those. Problem is, if you're facing a 1-3-1 team that's already taking both of your outer side turrets, you have a very big problem in setting up those team fights since you're always under pressure. Mad Lions are always getting to the objective first by virtue of pushing out those minions. You get the extra free minion vision on the side lanes, but you also get the early roam timer. Teleport being used for a collapse. Okay, they're going in after Maple. You would normally think that Set's not the target, but in this case, he is. 
They're trying to not give him an out to use that ulti to escape. Pops the Haymaker, tries to do whatever he can, but nothing can be done in a 4v1. Good kill for Mad Lions. The side lanes are down. There's always extra pressure. No safety here for them to rely on. Maple just gets picked off with no objective on the map for PSG to go for in trade. Hanabi does get the top minion wave up to the top tower, but it means Tristana is alone with a tower, and the tower goes boom. Easy money. More and more of that falling into the Mad Lion's pockets now. Hanabi will be able to acquire the first turret of the game here for PSG Talon. Try to shore up that deficit a little bit. But it seems like every time something might be looking okay for PSG Talon, Kobe, well, Mad Lions are already responding here in the bottom side, taking out the first tier two turret of the game. I actually really enjoy that it is Karzi and Kaiser with with such a big presence in this game too since they were two of the the players that were on the world's team last year and and do want to have this redemption arc here at msi representing yeah. europe on the international stage once again you know as as very young players last time around coming in you know wanting to to learn from the experience this time around they were even set behind further with the level one invade and the big chunk under karzi but they did not falter they're under pressure and they showed poise on the international stage this is what you know fans in eu are looking for from this team um and definitely delivering thus far 28 seconds left on the dragon though and with that scuttle crab picked up psg talent have at least secured themselves some vision oh but we aren't done yet Nautilus ulti did not actually cast all the way, gets to cast it a second time now. Kaiser's in a bad spot, but Kai Wing's in an even worse one. It's a one for one here with the supports being Ooh. traded away, but now a nice Gnar ulti coming through with the damage onto Humanoid. He's in the stasis, trying to get back out, trying now to go back in. Armut's still ready. Oh, a double kill for the Lee Sin. Make it a triple. No, it's Elyoya grabbing the killing spree on that one. He'll continue chasing after Maple, seeing if there's anything else to find here in this fight. Flashing over the wall, immediately ready to go. There's the Realm Warp, and the fight just ain't fair. Humanoids <laughs> all the way out. Close, but just like Graves, my friends, no cigar. <laughs> hey, make her to the face is your prize on arrival. Humanoid kites it back out there, doesn't go down. Karzi as well, looking like he's bordering on crazy there, jumping in with the Tristana. Bloodthirst is boiling in his veins right now. He is just rocket jump resetting right into the face of PSG Talon. Multiple resets there, gets the kills, gets the objectives on top of it, and Mad Lions just pushing the pace. You love to see this. They keep up the pressure. Here's a look at setting up that team fight, though. River actually getting flashed on by Kaiser. H how can we just not talk about Kaiser enough here? This guy sets it up again. He forces out the early Zonias. So then there's nothing protecting uh, River later on. So they trade right here with the set ultimate being used just to bring Nautilus back into the team. Armut straight up solos Doggo at, at the turret. Kicks him in the face for the execution damage and then can join fourth person here, cuts off the escape. So River now, not having the safety of the earlier Zonias or Flash, gets picked off. Karzi jumps in on the Tristana. They finish off the extra kills. <laughs> and it's all smiles there on the side of Mad Lions. You love to see it back behind the scenes. Oh, the whole rest of the team staff is ready to go here, too. Now, let's see how quickly they can push this lead even further. Zenith Blade from Leona does not connect onto El Yoya's Udir, who will continue just backing up here a little bit. Now, let's see how far they want to push this down the mid lane. Karzi and Armit will be working together to get that wave shoved up. You can see El Yoya and Kaiser sticking together. You already made light of this earlier, Kobe, how effective it is to have Kaiser roaming around with El Yoya. The damage and lockdown between the two of them is incredibly threatening. And now they're already onto the Baron and forcing PSG Talon to come answer. All right, there's a lot of poke tools here on the side of PSG Town, so it's a little bit scary here for Mad Lions. Nar could go mega inside the Baron pit. That would be devastating for them as there are so many walls. So Mad Lions respect the Mega Nar transformation. Definitely a good call there. It gets way too dicey inside the pit. That would have been one of the more insane 50-50s if they continued on with it. Don't want to get Wombo there. Looks like the return though to finish off the vision. Now that yeah. Mega Nar is expiring, Really good timing window here. Good poise. Really respect that. Now they're going in. They're just deciding they want to turn for the fight. The whole goal Eddie. was to get PSG Talon to fight. 
Realm Warp's coming in. El Yoya locking down Hanabi. Karzi grabbing the killing spree. Kai Wing's your next target. There is no way out for this Leona, or at least there should not be. El Yoya on the pursuit. The damage follows it up. A double kill over to Karzi. And now that that's taken care of, they're right back onto the Baron. And they waste no time, Flowers. They kite out the Hulk. And then as soon as the Hulk transforms right back to Bruce Banner, they <laughs> turn on him. Vision he ain't Denial, green no more. And immediately kill off Mini Nar. Just so well timed. Now they don't have to worry about anything. Karzi's over the wall. Nidalee is toast and Baron is theirs. Press yeet, press delete the Tristana special. Doggo's under fire now as Maple looks to buy him a little bit of time, but it will cost his life. They end up getting four kills from start to finish there for Mad Lions and a Baron at 23 minutes. It's looking surgical now for Mad Lions. Really quick turn there. They kite out the Mega, they turn on the Mini, they get the kill, repeatedly sweeping out this Baron, forcing PSG to come to then. Continuing to turn for these picks too. Kaiser, once again, locks them up. And then you've got Udyr, so it's easy to stick on the Nar. Karzi can jump forward. They finish off this front line. They don't over chase it either. Uh, you know, trying to rush for anything extra. Just immediately turn to the Baron again. Then you clear up the wards once again, jump right over onto River. Now there's no threat of a steal. Immediately burst it down. Kaiser hex flashes over and lands this hooks. Like, are you kidding me? This guy's making an all-star Nautilus reel this game <laughs> for Mad Lions and they are not gonna let him down. Baron buff means they will push right through the base. Okay, here we go. Could this just be the push that ends the game? Considering these guys have an 11,000 gold lead, a really good team fight here is just game over and Mad Lions will take the win. El Yoya will apply pressure into the bottom lane. You can see Humanoid doing the same thing here in top while the other three stick together in mid. You called it back during champ select, Kobe. It is 1-3-1 one, one time. Yes, sir. This is the comfort zone. When you've got Baron on a team like that, too, very easy to execute. Uh, mid wave not synced up with the side waves because you have to just sit around and uh, put your hands under your butt, wait a while for, <laughs> for the minions to, to arrive, and then just push it on the hey, side ones to, to hope for the side ones to get there in time. They actually delay a little bit here and at least can sync up two. This time, though, it will be a hard push through. Hook goes out, but the counter engage. Okay, Karzi buying time with a stopwatch. Tries to get away, has to flash out of the solar flare. Maple having a flash now, out to save himself. Kai Wing's under fire, he'll be the first to die. Root comes through, stun follows up. River's in trouble, but it's immediately a double kill onto the set instead. Maple's out of the picture. River's running back into the fountain. Doggo has no opportunity for any DPS. Humanoid with a nice flash to avoid the Mega Nar into the tower. Now the mid lane inhibitor should die here. Inhibitor turret dying in the top lane. This is about to be a two inhib game in the snap of a finger. And this is a statement game from Mad Lions because PSG Talon were supposed to be the most difficult opponent for Mad Lions in this group, the most hyped up, and yet Mad Lions dealing with them very quickly here. Only 25-50 into this game. They can continue uh, to dominate the neutral objectives. No way for PSG Talon to try and rush out of their base. They've got two inhibitors down, so Dragon should get picked up during this replay in the aftermath by Mad Lions. Uh, here's a look at that counter engage attempt from PSG Talon though. Uh, Kaiser wastes no time. He flashes right inside the base. They hook through. Immediately El Yoya flashes over the wall to follow up. It's so easy here for Karzi uh, to just rocket jump forward because his front line is so aggressively setting him up with those stuns. And Armut's Lee Sin. This guy has been so big. We saw in the replay, you know, way off screen, top of the map, he had dealt with Doggo, solo kills the Kaisa before returning to the team fight. Uh, he has yet to, to die on this champion till. Yeah. Really, really emphatically displaying the strengths that people were hyped about coming in for the meta changes for MSI. He's got the lifesteal build. He has the shield hopping in and out of the fights, creating the plays onto the carries and jumping forward. All right, here we go. Final inhibitor under pressure now. 
Maple backing up, trying to see if there's an angle to re-engage, but with the inhibitors already out of the picture, that means that PSG Talon are stuck in the base at best. They find a kill onto Kaiser, however, they immediately lose their mid laner. Armit goes on a rampage, River jumps in, but it's not enough. Karzy's already legendary, baby, tell the tale! Doggo, the only man left standing, and they leave him alive just to let him watch the Nexus fall. Oh! <laughs> You all are fantastic to watch. What an incredible showing here from the European team. Absolutely dismantling PSG talent. That's actually.